Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror drama film, Dig Monte Colony. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a narration dating back to the British rule in India. We learn about a Portuguese businessman named John de Monte, who struck a deal with the British rulers and managed to create a name for himself all over the world. John would go on to gift his wife a beautiful necklace worth millions of dollars, but she ended up falling ill. After learning that his son had also passed away, John became depressed and decided to sell off his property in another city so that he and his wife could go back to Portugal. However, after coming back from the city, John noticed that his wife became pregnant, mostly because one of the staff at his mansion had his way with her by taking advantage of her mental state. John ended up going crazy and killing all his staff at the mansion in a fit of rage, and this made all the villagers upset with him. The mansion got burned down in the process, as did John, but it is widely believed that he continues to haunt the mansion as a ghost. Whoever visits the ghost mansion is believed to not come out alive, which is why the mansion is sealed off from the public. Now in the present day, we see a bald producer going to office and focusing on making money. He calls a scriptwriter named Beery, who is to pitch a new script to him. The bald producer asks Beery for the details of the script, and Beery mentions that he's taken inspiration from an English movie and made it to suit the Indian audience. However, the bald producer only wants to make a comedy movie and asks for a ridiculous story. Beery gets fired, possibly because he's not willing to sacrifice his beard for the producer's hair transplant. So Beardy goes to drink some tea, and hears a creep talking about a movie idea, where he will shoot a freaky scene with his girlfriend. Beardy doesn't really care about these ideas, so he walks away. Now we see Beardy's shitty friend, Nate Lucer, who is scolded by his client and her son for not properly installing the air conditioning of their house. During his job, he notices some TV boys coming to install a new connection at the house, but they get treated with respect. What's worse is that Lucer isn't even paid his full amount, whereas the client pays the TV boys without thought. Dejected and frustrated, Lucer calls his other friend, Skinny, who's inside a cyber cafe. Skinny gets distracted when the neighboring creep gets romantic with his online girlfriend. He has an argument with the creep, but leaves him alone because he doesn't want to see his disgusting body. Later, Skinny calls Lucer and tells him to meet up with Beardy for a drink together. At night, the three friends catch up at a local bar and want to drink to their heart's content but don't have any cash, so they call another friend named Stud. Despite their requests, Stud has to ask his sugar mama if he can meet his shitty friends. However, sugar mama scolds Stud, so he has to say no to his friends. However, things take a turn when sugar daddy shows up, so she has to shoo Stud away after giving him some cash. Stud rushes out of the building and can now meet his friends for a drink. Skinny, Beardy, and Loser complain about their lives, but Stud tells them not to be such giant babies. He goes on to explain that he has to please his sugar mama so that he can support them and their wasteful habits. It starts to rain, so the group has to hide under a bus stand. Suddenly, sugar mama calls Stud and forces him to say, I love you, so his friends tease him about it. Stud thinks back to how much he gets tortured by his mother in order to earn his cash, but doesn't want to talk about it. Now the friends decide to visit the legendary cursed mansion to pass the time, but Lucer is scared of the dark, so he insults the others and says he's out of the plan. Skinny and Beardy decide to teach Lucer a lesson and forcefully kidnap him. Stud joins in on the fun, and the friends ride through the rain and into the cursed mansion. Lucer cries like a chicken as they explore the mansion. Suddenly, he gets pushed away while the others go upstairs. Lucer starts his lighter and tries to look for his buddies, but in vain. Stud senses someone behind him and turns around to see if there's a ghost. However, he doesn't find anything, and then his friends decide to mess around with Lucer some more. It turns out that Lucer has already wet his pants twice, but Beardy turns his attention to an axe in front of him. Skinny tries to make some spooky sounds to scare Lucer, but this also awakens some of the spirits around the group. Beardy is about to spot some of the spirits, but they vanish before they are seen. Stud has had enough, so he decides to reunite with Lucer, and then even Beardy says that they should leave the mansion as soon as possible. The next day, the friends set out on their Tesla bikes and go to the temple to meet a fortune teller. Stud is hesitant to put his thumbprint on the paper and thinks a fortune teller is a fraud, but gets surprised when fortune teller gives him accurate information about his past. Fortune teller takes it a bit further, saying that Stud is going to have a horrible life ahead of him, where he'll have to depend on begging from people like his sugar mama for survival. After telling Stud that he will never get married in this lifetime, Fortune Teller picks Skinny as his next victim. He says that Skinny should go just off himself because he's not even worthy of begging. After these two, Lucer gives his thumbprint, and so does Beardy. But Fortune Teller doesn't have the right files to assess their future, so he tells the group to come back on Saturday with extra cash. 
As Stutt rides his Tesla bike, he gets a call from Fortune Teller, but not from Elon Musk. Fortune Teller sounds extremely scared and begs Stud to come see him, but Stud can't hear him properly. Regardless, Stud goes to meet Fortune Teller, but finds him dead and rushes back home. He sits down with his friends for a drink, but doesn't mention what he saw. Lucerv has fallen asleep, and Skinny wastes his time on daily soaps, so Beery talks about the legend of John de Monte. We are told the exact same story as the one at the start of the movie. However, we also see John calling for a doctor to check up on his wife. The doctor says she needs to operate on John's wife in the hospital, but he doesn't want the news of his wife getting pregnant to spread. The doctor says she must treat the sick wife outside the mansion, so John goes crazy with rage and picks up the same axe that Beardy had spotted earlier. He kills the doctor and takes his wife away, but also rows crazy with anger because he wants to know who got his wife pregnant. The madness slowly takes over John, and he kills two of his staff members in a fit of crazy rage. But it doesn't stop there, as John turns into a crazed psycho, and this leads the villagers to burn down the mansion. John angrily bangs his gun on the floor, and then he shoots at some barrels of gunpowder to trigger the explosion that destroyed the mansion. Back to the present, Beardy tells the others that John's spirit still haunts the mansion even hundreds of years after the incident. He mentions that whoever goes to the mansion doesn't come back alive, but Stud and Skinny argue that they had also gone to the mansion and managed to survive. Beery agrees that the ghost story is just a myth and also confesses that his true intention to enter the mansion was to get the fancy necklace, worth millions of dollars. Beardy adds that he had spoken with an old sage for advice on the necklace and had learned that a couple of thieves tried to steal it a few years ago, but were found dead, and the necklace magically returned to the mansion. Now, Beardy reveals that he stole the necklace when his friends weren't looking, and he gives proof by taking it out from his bag. Stud takes a look at the necklace and is put into a trance. Then Beardy suggests selling the necklace in small parts so that they can all solve their problems. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door and the group gets scared, but it just turns out to be the delivery boy. Now Beardy puts on a horror movie from Daniel CC Movie Channel for everyone to watch, but the screen shows a recording of the group inside the TV. This alarms the boys, but Beardy stops Stud from doing anything silly. After some time, the movie begins, and Skinny goes to the toilet, but he sees a zombie version of himself in the mirror. Suddenly, a ghost grabs his shirt and knocks him down. Skinny screams in his chicken voice for help as the mirror starts moving aggressively. He's immediately smacked into the mirror, and then he gets electrocuted inside the bathroom. Stud goes to check up on Skinny, but the ghost mimics his chicken voice and tells Stud everything is fine. As the ghost ends Skinny's skinny life, the lights go off, and Stud has to take care of the leaking ceiling. However, Beardy gets possessed and thus becomes a Beardy spirit, and he goes to burn Looser, who's still asleep soundly, like a pig. Luckily, Stud stops him in the nick of time, but Beardy drops some oil in the process, possibly the oil to smooth his messy beard. Stud tries his best to snap Beardy out of his trance, but Beardy gets burned alive. Stud then notices Skinny who is dead, and he tries to get out of the house, but is locked inside. Now we're back to real life and learn that everything that had happened so far was part of the Daniel CC movie. The boys try to shut down the TV, but it's of no use as it remains on even after removing the plug. Skinny turns on the lights, but it causes a power outage, so Stud calls up an electrician and manages to bribe him into coming to check the lights. Suddenly, he spots some people outside the house and tries to get their attention, but the doors refuse to open and a screeching sound tears down his ears. Stud eventually gives up as his ears start to bleed, so he calls the electrician again. However, he's told that the electrician had come to the house and taken his bribe earlier. Stud checks his pockets and doesn't find any money, so he realizes that this is true. With no other option, Stud reveals to Skinny and Beardy that he found Fortune Teller dead. This makes Beardy anxious, so he makes Stud play his call recording with Fortune Teller, which was muffled up earlier. It turns out that Fortune Teller was saying Looser had died the previous night, and the person with the group is a ghost. Tensions run high, and nobody wants to go to the bathroom alone to make a solo pee, so all the boys relieve themselves together one by one. Stud eventually loses his patience, so he uses Skinny's fat phone to make a call to one of his friends. However, Skinny has no calling balance, so the only other option is for Beardy to bring out his Ouija board. Stud doesn't like this idea and slats Beardy's beard for keeping such a cursed item. With nothing better to do, the boys sit down and summon a ghost that claims to be good. However, it also reveals that there's another ghost in the house, which is going to kill everyone. The good ghost says it can't help the boys, so Stud gets angry and says they should burn the Ouija board. That's exactly what happens as the board catches fire and forms an arrow that rotates aggressively. 
The boys anticipate who's going to get chosen by the arrow, but then, Ghost Loser wakes up and drinks some water, which makes the others scatter out of fear. He goes back to sleep, so the boys get back into their positions. The arrow is pointing at Beardy's position, so the ghost of John appears in front of him. Beardy tries to talk to his friends, but he's not audible to them. Stud points out that he's looking like a zombie, and then Beardy writes on the TV, stating that the haunting John will kill them all. Suddenly, Beardy is lifted into the air by his beard and dragged into the bathroom, so the others go after him. However, Skinny is dragged and thrown next to the oven. After that, the bathroom door is opened. We see that Beardy has been killed the exact same way that Skinny was killed in the movie. Skinny starts to panic, but Stud thinks that they will be safe, because Beardy is the one who had stolen the cursed necklace. Unfortunately, Skinny points out to Stud that he has zombie eyes now. Stud loses his mind and smacks Skinny out of frustration, after which he falls to the ground and gets fried to death like a turkey. A quick replay takes us back to when Skinny was dragged to the oven. His phone had fallen inside the oven and started heating up. This caused the nearby water dispenser to leak and the water short-circuited the oven, after which an electrical puddle was formed on the floor. This was how Skinny got killed and Stud loses his sanity over it. Now, the air conditioner goes into overdrive and starts freezing the whole place. Stud also freezes, so he finds a matchstick next to a god idol. Once he's next to the idol, he notices that it's not cold anymore. Realizing this is a safe zone for him, Stud cuts through the nearby window, despite John's ghost trying to intimidate him. Ghost Loser suddenly wakes up and tries to trick Stud into stepping out of the safe zone, but Stud remembers what Fortune Teller told him, so he ignores Ghost Loser and makes his way out of the window to escape the house. He hurts himself while landing and goes to a nearby kiosk, asking for help. The men ignore him, so V angrily slaps one of them, but his hand passes through his body. That's when Stud realizes that he's actually a ghost, because he impaled himself during his landing earlier. Now, a truck approaches Stud, and he sees Ghost Loser inside it wearing the necklace, which is going to be returned to the cursed mansion, just like how the sage had mentioned earlier to Beardy. The movie ends with Ghost John's hair making an appearance next to Stud. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.